Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums and in today's video we are going to be discussing the brand new Operation Burnt Toast. Next meme! So as you will no doubt be aware, this has just dropped. They have just done the reveal trailer and I am so hyped to be able to break some of this down for you. Now you probably will have just seen the reveal trailer or you will have seen it earlier on and both Mozzie and Gridlock can be... Uh, they, they seem fairly simplistic for the most part, but for me, it raised a lot of questions when I first saw it. I wanted to know all these different intricate details about ins and outs of the operators, so hopefully I can break these down a little bit more for you. So first up, we're going to take a look at Mozzie's drone traps. Now, the biggest thing about this, and the first question I had when I saw it, was can you pick them back up? The answer is yes. Once you have deployed it, if you don't like where it is or you don't like where it's situated on the map, you can go ahead and pick it back up to utilize later on in the game. This is going to be really effective and a really strong tactic if, for whatever reason, you put them out during the prep phase to try and protect the actual site itself, as well as grabbing some intel. But if you don't like where they're situated, you can then pick them up and move them elsewhere. You can't put these outside, I don't believe, because it will be destroyed. And I think it's pretty much like Echo's drone in the sense of once you actually capture it, you cannot take that drone outside. You will just lose it, which is a bit of a shame, but it's one that I kind of understand. Number two on the list is going to be regarding the captured drones. They actually get a white outline for defenders, which makes it really easy to see which ones are yours. So you don't end up inadvertently shooting them. But for the attackers, it's a little bit different. They actually get a white light, similar to Dakaibi when she hacks the cameras. But it is certainly for defenders blatantly obvious as to which ones are the captured drones and which ones aren't. Now, when I first heard about all of this, I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to be shooting out all my own ones that, you know, on defense we've captured. But that's not going to be the case at all. And that is a really, really positive move. Next up, and this is the biggest one for me. This is one that I'm really excited for. Gridlock has this new M249 scope, but because this is the same weapon that Capital has, he also has this scope available to him. Now initially we were so shocked by this, but I I didn't see how it's going to have much of an impact straight away. I thought, well, it's still the M249, it's never been the most viable weapon, but with this scope being so similar to Kaid and Nomad Secondary... <coughs> oh. Oh. That's clean. <laughs> It is pinpoint accurate. I mean, you can hold ridiculous angles with this thing, and it's really powerful. Now, I'm not 100% on why they've started to do this with random sites for different attach, like different weapons. The new holographic that's available on Mozzie's SMG, coupled with the the new ACOG, the previous ones with like uh, Clash's recent red dot. It seems a bit strange that all these individual operators are getting them, but perhaps that's to make the weapons feel a little bit more unique. Personally, for me, I'd love to see it available on a lot more weapons. I'd love to be able to utilize this new hollow on Ella, for example, or on Legion. Because the new scopes that they've introduced are really, really nice. Number four for today is going to be Gridlock's Traps. These are essentially barbed wire for attackers. Now, I'll be the first to admit this. I'm struggling to see a little bit how they're going to fit in in a competitive game mode. And it does seem very similar in its effect to sort of what a Nomad would do. I mean, 9 times out of 10 by putting an air jab out, that's going to be an early warning that someone is flanking up on you. And it's a lot less obvious than this thing. Nomad's air jabs, however, can be taken out if they're spotted, obviously. And they can be a little bit inconsistent at times. Gridlock's traps really won't be. There is no chance that they're going to miss these, purely because of the fact it just continually fills the room. The first time I saw these traps going down, I thought, okay, there's going to be between three or five, and it just kept going and going and going. I couldn't believe how many there were. This is going to be hilarious to just fill an entire corridor and pretty much lock down an entire way into the site. In the dying seconds of a game, or once the diffuser is down, if you've got sight control, it's going to be really interesting watching the defenders trying to get through and trying to deal with all these traps if you save them and put them down later on in the round. If you're in a 1v4 or 1v3 clutch situation, the last thing you want to deal with as a defender is an entire corridor just full of these spikes. The final thing for today that we're going to take a look at is the shotgun. Now, the shotgun actually has three rounds and it is an incredible weapon for destruction. It's so good for taking down walls and it could potentially, if you're going to be taking Mozzie for the intel that he can provide, you know, if you've got a mirror or a smoke or a mute, you could potentially run just the, the normal SMGs on these guys or the pistol on mirror as a secondary. 
and instead run one of these guys with the secondary shotgun. Nevertheless, it's really, really nice to use, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun playing with these ops. Now, I apologise, this video is a lot shorter. I wanted to get a lot of these little bits of information out there because it is often difficult to get everything from the actual play test or from the, the reveal trailer. I know certainly when I first saw them, I had more questions than I had answers, and that is definitely still the case for me. I've played about uh, 12 to 15 rounds so far, and I, I genuinely, I have so many questions and things I want to try out, and I'm really looking forward to getting back, jumping on the TTS, and hopefully hanging out with Koros for a little bit, because 9 times out of 10 when I do that, all my questions are answered in the first hour or so, because he's so, so quick at uh, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Nevertheless, this season looks to be an interesting as hell one, and this entire year for that matter. Hopefully this video answers some of your questions, hopefully you're as hyped for it as I am. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.